Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel to gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook. Call the meeting to order. Is that correct? And uh, if so, I will do so. And uh, I will ask the people to identify themselves and where they are uh, for this meeting. And I'll begin at the top of my page with uh, Chuck Muller, who is here representing the, among those representing the 275th Anniversary Committee. <laughs> So, Chuck, you just say where you are. and I'm at Four, I'm at four Depot Street, uh, and I am alone. Okay. Uh, Kyle, you're next on my <clears throat> screen. Kyle Fox, Public Works Director and Town Center Committee member. I'm in my office in Town Hall. Right. Bill? Bill Cummings. Bill Cummings. Bill um, Wilkes. Oh, sorry, Bill. No, go ahead. Bill Wilkes, go ahead. Bill Wilkes, I'm at 11 Continental Boulevard sitting next to a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> it's an exciting day so far. We're in the dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Cummings. Yes, sir. Yeah, Bill Cummings, I'm alone at my home in Merrimack. Okay. Matt? Uh, Matt Gasparius, Director of Parks and Recreation, and I am in my office at Wasserman Park, even though my picture looks like I'm at Abby Griffin. Yeah, it looks like you're at a carnival. Yeah. <laughs> Finley? Yes, Finley Rothhouse. I'm uh, uh, at my home, 14 Kidbridge Lane. I'm by myself. Okay. Karen? I'm Karen Freed. I'm at home at a on Andrea Circle in Merrimack, and I am alone. Okay. Matt Chevenel, you check Yeah. Here? Yeah. Matt, Matt Chevenel, Assistant Superintendent for Business, uh, representing the school district. I am in the SAU office executive suites. <laughs> and, uh, I am by my a long time waiting for that. <laughs> Otherwise known as a bedroom. Yes. <laughs> I am in the guest bedroom of Jim O'Neill's house right now, which is uh, actual. But uh, yeah, we're here in the SAU office. I am by myself in my office with an occasional superintendent walking by my window, so. Okay. And John. Hi, I'm uh, John Lestoker. Um, I'm representing the Merrimack Historical Society. I'm, I'm at my home at 183 Amist Road in my office. Okay. Well, thank you all for checking in. Uh, the uh, first order of business is designating a minute, uh, a minute taker for this meeting. And I guess I will do it unless somebody would like to volunteer. If anybody would like to volunteer, they're, they're welcome. Otherwise, I will do it. And then uh, our first order of business is item number three on the agenda, which is an approval of minutes of the December 4th meeting. And I sent those out today to the committee. I hope uh, everybody had them from before, but just in case, um, is there any uh, comments, questions, or um, desires by the committee regarding approval of these minutes? Well, I make a motion to approve with no, no amendments. Okay, I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second to that motion? Karen, second. Second. thank you, Karen. Anyone, anyone want to make any comments or anything before we approve this meeting? I've seen Rosemary Rung has joined us. That's nice. And, uh, <laughs> and um, 
Anything else that uh, we'd like to add to these? If not, I will call the question. All those in favor of approval of the minutes of January, of December the 4th, uh, indicate, oh, this has got to be a roll call, sorry. Yes. So I approve. And uh, Bill Cummings, how do you vote? I approve. I, Matt how, uh, Chevenel, how do you approve? How do you yes. vote? Yes, okay. Uh, Finley, how do you vote? On I will be abstaining. Uh, abstaining, okay. And uh, Karen? Yes. Yes. And uh, John, uh, that's, that's oh, oh, Kyle. Mr. Yes. Yes, okay. Okay, so we have one abstention, which is Finley, and uh, the others are in voting in favor, so those minutes are approved. Uh, the next item on the agenda today is uh, is under is a new discussion with the Merrimack 275th Anniversary uh, Committee. Uh, we were asked to put this on by uh, Paul McHaley called me, and uh, we have with us from that committee today, we have uh, Chuck Mower. We have, uh, uh, let me see, John Lestoka and Rosemary Rung, and I think, oh, and Matt Kasparius. So um, I'm going to turn the meeting over to them and let them present their issue to this committee, and uh, maybe we can come to some happy conclusions at the end of that. Ch uh, Chuck, are you speak spokesperson for this committee, or are there others? Uh, no, uh, uh, Rosemary uh, will be presenting for us. Okay. Rosemary, happy to see you. You're looking yeah. good. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nelson. It's so good to see you. And I'm sorry I was a few minutes late. I'm kind of, you know, going, leaving one minute meeting uh, early to get to another one late today. Um, <laughs> But um, I've, I've recently joined the 275th birthday committee um, for Merrimack, and it's just a great group of people. We really, um, you know, it's unusual for, for towns in the United States to reach this milestone. So we want to make it a, a very memorable one for our community. Um, one aspect of the celebration is a town gift um, marking the 275th birthday. And we have been, I'm on a subcommittee with Chuck and Lori Rothhaus to um, look at, uh, and I think John Lestowski has been involved in that too, to look in, it, at what, what type of gift would be appropriate. And Chuck um, came up with this, uh, I, I think it's a really great um, um, opportunity um, that, that needs some further discussion, but I think it's going to present a lot of opportunities for our community. And that would be a covered bridge at Twin Bridge Park. Um, I've learned that the, that little road there, which is essentially right now kind of a footbridge, a foot road, um, is actually the oldest road in Merrimack. And um, it, it sits in a park that many people just think is an afterthought to a day at Kids Cove. But um, I think a covered bridge would be a very a significant um, icon of our community, just like Abbey Griffin Park Bandstand is. Um, I'd like to learn more from the town center because uh, this committee, because I actually think that this covered bridge may um, be a very strategic uh, move for us to uh, define the town center and perhaps link up with trails or other um, destinations in the community and, and we can use this instead of as a gift that's an end it actually could be a beginning to a lot of development of our natural resources and cultural experience being in Merrimack so that's kind of the introduction to it um, Chuck knows a lot more and, and John too about the specifics of this so I'll, I'll hand it over to Chuck well Rosemary thank you very much that was uh a very eloquent representation of the opportunities that our, our town uh, is able to enjoy uh, by our continued work um, to expand multiple use uh, open spaces and uh, cultural opportunities. The idea of a bridge um, is, is not new. Uh, and yet it is coming in a reincarnation uh, with the uh, 275th committee. Uh, it, it essentially, um, I think, represents a great deal that has been 
lamented over the years by people in Merrimack having lost their two original covered bridges. Um, and in the very uh, center of our community, uh, it adds, I think, a very visible and iconic uh, footprint uh, to continue to build on the center of our community. The, the idea is essentially uh, one that is, quite frankly, in desperate need. We do have a footbridge uh, across the Babuzik Brook at what is known as Twin Bridges. Uh, it rests on the original abutments of the Narragansett Number no. 5 land grant, which was established in 1733. And I believe the, uh, the admonition to build the bridge was in 1736 or 1738. Um, this was, in fact, the first road that was laid out from the Great River Road ending at the Sauhegan River uh, in Dunstable and uh, continuing on all the way up to the Piscataquag. Uh, when the town was incorporated, um, uh, they, they didn't have enough uh, resources. And so they petitioned again a couple of years later uh, telling the royal governor that the land they got was mean and ordinary. And so they carved off Narragansett number no. five from Bedford and gave it to Merrimack. And interestingly, we never had to pay for those bridges or road improvements that Bedford established before it was given back to us. Great tax benefit on our part. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Do we get him to pay for this one? <laughs> <laughs> well, there there may be some some opportunity. Absolutely, we we expect that if we undertake this, that we are going to leave no stone unturned in trying to persuade people as to the um, benefits uh, that we believe truly are too numerous to particularize. Um, but some of them are, are pretty evident off, off the top of any of our heads at this uh, early stage. Clearly the bridge that is there needs to be repaired uh, to be uh, useful and to be preserved. Uh, the idea of this covered bridge is actually to go over the top of that bridge without disturbing any of the archeological um, site uh, thus preserv preserving the history, the archaeology, and the concrete bridge that was put in during the Depression, that is the Great Depression, um, by the Works Progress Administration help. And so there's a tremendous amount of history um, that we're trying to protect uh, and, yet, and yet draw upon uh, as well. It's preserved. Uh, this also was at the intersection of um, this first highway and a road that continued on down past the bridge, down to what uh, I, I believe was known as White's Mill. Uh, there is a grist, an old grist mill site uh, down at the end of the brook um, uh, with uh, uh, archaeological evidence very apparent. And it is yet yet another opportunity uh, for the town to perhaps uh, clean up and enjoy and improve and uh, uh, and and put on display uh, for people that want uh, these kinds of opportunities, which I believe truly is the larger part of the community. We are coming into an age, I believe, um, where people can no longer afford, largely speaking, um, the cottage at the beach, uh, the camp uh, at the lakes, uh, the little uh, condo in the mountains, uh, etc. Uh, to look for recreational and cultural opportunities becomes uh, something where I think we have to look 
more closely to home. Uh, and particularly because the best government, of course, is the government that is closest to us. We have those resources here in Merrimack. Uh, many of them we have improved. We certainly have improved the Twin Bridge large acreage by putting in Kids Cove, by putting in the MYA facilities, uh, etc. Well, we simply believe that um, this is an opportunity to connect our previous history of 275 years with our, our present day interests uh, and an opportunity to uh, interpret them uh, over time into the future. The covered bridge as we see it would be a replica of the covered bridge at the Flume in uh, Franconia Notch. I don't know if somebody's able to pull up uh, uh, a picture of that for us today or not. It's just simply Flume, Flume Bridge. And um, it's, Flume Bridge is actually about the same size that we would envision putting in. Uh, it's about 60 feet long and oh, probably about uh, 20 feet wide overall. Um, and I think the, the portal and so forth is particularly attractive here. And so not only would we have improved the, the spanning of um, Babusik Brook, but in doing so, we would create essentially a pavilion uh, where people could gather uh, in inclement weather to enjoy a reunion or a, a wedding event or whatever, and certainly in the sunnier weather and so forth. It, it represents a, a beautiful backdrop for those kinds of pictures and events and so forth. Um, uh, it, you know, it's, it's the iconic image that uh, everybody in our entire nation loves about a covered bridge. It's, it's about as nice as it can possibly get. And we believe that this kind of uh, facility, uh, this kind of undertaking, uh, this covered bridge would uh, cement uh, initiatives uh, in our community for improvement and uh, building upon for a variety of different uh, public groups and public interests. And I, I know I, I don't want to bore people with any more information unless uh, there's something other uh, specific item that I can address. Well, thank you, Chuck. That's that's very interesting and an interesting idea. I'd like to open for the uh, committee to make any comments. What uh, what is it? Could I before I do that? Could I ask what are you asking of the town center committee at this time? Uh, uh, what is what is the ask here from from us? Well, we want your blessing uh, to ensure that um, this is in fact a, a worthwhile undertaking um, or, or your admonition that, that it is not. Okay. Uh, and we also want to ensure that the town center committee, which is probably much more familiar with um, the uh, trails programs and the, uh, the other center committee activities, uh, the safe routes to schools, the regular um, uh, master plan recreational uh, plans and undertakings are, are consistent uh, with this kind of thinking. Uh, and, and we look for your, for your encouragement uh, or, or your very constructive criticism. Okay, thank you. I yeah. Oh, can please. I add something? Yes, please do. Um, and also, you know, I don't see this uh, project as being isolated to the town's anniversary. I see that there's a lot of synergy that it could have with the town center committee. Um, and so it's it's almost, I'm looking at the, the, the potential of it being a shared project where we both feel an investment to meet our goals through this one project. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Chuck, you know, talked about, you know, we'd like to have the town 
uh, the, the town center committee provide some feedback on it um, and to see if it does fit in with what your charge is. And, and if so, that it's something that we could bring forth to the town council together. Okay. Okay, thank you. That, I just wanted to be clear on that so that we're headed in the right direction and we know what's being asked. Uh, how about some comments from the town center committee members who are present? Uh, um, Kyle, I'd certainly like to hear from you because we've had some discussions internally about another place for a covered bridge over the Sahigan River to replace the steel bridge that was given to us by the state of New Hampshire and now is unsafe before we ever got to really use it. But uh, uh, Kyle, maybe you have some comments as a public works director and as, as committee member as to uh, what your thoughts and feelings would be on this. So I guess my first comment would be in kind of a serendipitous moment. Um, I'm not sure if Rosemary, you or any of your group had a chance to look at the town center committee meeting minutes that we just approved. Oh. But at our last meeting, um, to step back, the, the town council has been approving uh, starting in, in our current budget and hopefully for the budget we're proposing um, next week to the town council, $200,000 for sidewalk improvements in the town center area. Um, this this year, we're working on constructing Woodbury Street. But what was recommended by the committee in last month's meeting was to uh, run a sidewalk down Twin Bridge Road, uh, which would connect to the other side of the trails from the Twin Bridges that, that you and Chuck were speaking about to Twin Bridge Road and it would complete that loop um, through through that park. So kind of a uh, kind of a neat tie in with what the town center committee was already doing to the project you're proposing. Um, with respect to Nelson's comment of the other bridge, um, I guess I, I'm not sure it's my place to to make recommendations to, to you folks on which bridge should be a covered bridge or what uh, what should take place at this point? Um, so I'll, I, I won't, I won't step into that territory too much, other than to share my, my uh, gratitude for anyone or any group who thinks about putting covered bridges in because they're spectacular and, and wonderful pieces of history for the state. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Um, Chuck wanted to say something here. I think he had his hand. <coughs> Well, one of the things that I didn't mention was that we were thinking very seriously about having one of the great covered bridge building families in New England uh, undertake this project, which would give it real legitimacy um, uh, amongst the devotees of covered bridges uh, so that it was structurally um, correct and authentic and so forth. And of course, that would be uh, the, the Grayton family. And I, I know Kyle was uh, probably familiar with the Grayton family. And I wondered if he might just take a few words to if he if he knew uh, about what their activities have been in New Hampshire. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that, Chuck. I apologize. Well, then you've had the good fortune probably of never having run into Milton the senior uh, in your in your days uh, with the uh, Department of Transportation. Okay, okay. Well, uh, how about some other thoughts on this? Um, one thing that is uh, always comes up with covered bridges, Chuck, is the unfortunate loss to fire that we've had in our past with covered bridges, and. Um, I'll give you a little bit of the, my experience with it, and then I'd like to hear what you have to say. But at the time the Turkey Hill Bridge was burned, I went to the, I lived on the other side of it and used to go over it every day to work. So I missed it. And I went to the selectmen and I went to 
uh, a company called the Coppers Company, which at that time was doing business, uh, substantial business in Nashua. They had a large facility there for treating wood. And uh, among the treatments that they could give to wood was fireproofing. And uh, they were quite excited at that time. This is 1967, so <laughs> a lot of water has gone under the bridge since then. But uh, they were interested in working with the town. I took this proposal to the selectmen who were not at all in favor. And frankly, they uh, thought it was ridiculous to be building covered bridges at that time, and they did not uh, espouse the plan. So it, they got a bridge from the state, which uh, didn't cost them anything, and that was, that was good. So uh, I just put that on the table and want to know if you've given any thought to the issue of fireproofing and, and how that ties in today with modern construction things. Well, uh, that is an, an avenue that certainly uh, is available to us uh, in, in many ways today that were different from 1968. Uh, of course, I remember the covered bridges very well. Uh, I don't remember them burning because I happened to be uh, in the Republic of Vietnam at that time. But um, we imagine that we can take such technologies that are available to us today. Uh, we have the ability to run power from the MYA facility down to the bridge. It's a very short distance. So we can put in uh, uh, a camera to monitor the bridge, much like we had the camera that monitored uh, the destruction of the, uh, of the center dam uh, by the fire station. People could tune in anytime they wanted and see what was going on in, in Twin Bridges. Uh, that certainly would help deter any kind of vandalism. Uh, there are other technologies that could also be placed in the bridge for uh, alarming and, uh, and monitoring and so forth. Uh, and of course, uh, if we're going to enjoy, um, you know, perhaps charging a fee or something like that, we're, uh, the use of the bridge for events and so forth, we would have to have power. And so all of those things come together to uh, add to the uh, vibrancy of protecting the bridge. Uh, simply believing that the bridge is something important and useful and, and attractive uh, eliminates a, a lot of possibilities for vandalism. And then beyond that, the technologies and so forth. Uh, in, including the possibility of fireproofing, uh, you know, perhaps we'll have, uh, uh, you know, a sheet metal roof on this facility as opposed to an old fashioned, um, you know, split seat or shake or something like that. I mean, there, there are lots of things uh, in the details of uh, planning and managing a project like this that um, okay, bridges yet can to come, come to bear. Right, yeah. Okay, how about hearing from some of the other committee members here? Uh, Karen. I have a question. When it was originally being presented a little, a, a little while ago, you said somebody said something about the covered bridge going over the present bridge. Now, I, I assume the present bridge is cement and automatically fireproof. Would it just be like a, um, you know, like a decoration, a decorative thing that would just go over the cement and steel bridge that's there now? Or am I mistaken and I, I misunderstood? It, it would be a real structural covered bridge uh, that protects and preserves the original uh, bridge and apartments, but is, is not utilizing it in any way. It's simply an umbrella. The old bridge will simply be under the new bridge, but the new bridge will carry its own loads. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> on, on that point, if I may. Yeah. Um, just touching back on more recent history from where Chuck has been. Um, 
back in uh, the the flood of the Mother's Day flood of 2006, uh, some of you may or may not know, uh, there's actually two. There were actually two WPA bridges on that parcel. One of them washed away in the Mother's Day flood, and was replaced in 2007 with a uh, steel and timber bridge. It's a timber decking uh, steel frame bridge. Uh, so this is the only remaining WPA bridge. Um, it is common to build new bridges uh, while preserving the old. Uh, by way of example, the Manchester Street Bridge that we reconstructed uh, that connects Merrimack to Nashua a few years ago. Um, at part of the um, historical mitigation we had to go through is the old stone abutments had to remain. So new abutments were placed further back from the old stone abutments, um, which requires a longer span for the bridge, um, but it preserves what was there. Uh, so I think that's probably where, where Chuck is looking at this. Um, the one thing I would caution is giving, given what happened to the other bridge uh, during the design process, you'd want to look at the hydraulics of the of the brook running under it to see if there is enough capacity um, to 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 keep the old bridge there because uh, what you wouldn't want to do is in 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 trying to preserve what's there which is a, a great concept um, you wouldn't want to damage both bridges by by leaving the old one so it's just something that would have to be worked out in the in the design phase. Yeah. Okay, how about somebody else? Uh, John, you have anything to add to this? Well, um, I just came on the committee a few weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm, I'm representing the Historical Society. Yeah. And uh, as, as far as the construction that uh, Chuck is talking about. Um, there's there's plenty of folks out there that can you know build a sturdy bridge, and I totally agree with Kyle about the um, the footing and you know there needs to be you know some engineering done there. But yeah. going, I'm I'm going to jump right over to the historical society because that's my charge. Um, I'm really interested in in the grist mills in town and. Uh, about a week and a half ago, Chuck took me for a little tour down there, and the White's Grist Mill is so interesting. Um, since I, I've been on the Historical Society, I, I've been infatuated with the, with the mills in town. This covered bridge would, would really add interest to that. Um, back in the 1700s and 1800s, the only power that we had was was water and water, water wheels, sawmill, grist mills, and um, I know there's quite a few in town. There's, there was actually one across from my property on Am well on Lester Road, uh, Fuller Mill, and um, we're just starting to dig into some of that history. But I think I think the town would would benefit greatly with with um, just the history of knowing knowing how the town started, the, the hardships they went through, <laughs> you know, with the Indians, or, you know, the, actually the Indians helping them. Um, I, I, I just can't think of a, of a better way to uh, uh, explain the history to the town. It's, uh, you know, the trails around town, Horse Hill, along the river, there are plenty of stories to be had. And I think, I think that's, you know, if the town's hunting for an identity, that'd be, that'd, that'd be a really nice thing to take a charge to. And the covered bridge would certainly add to it. And the one, um, Severin's Bridge, which is down the road, from my house. Um, I was a young man when that burned and it really tore me up, it, I just, Turkey Hill and Severance Bridge were, those are the things I played on. And I see Nelson nodding his head, but um, 
Yeah, in fact, my initials were carved and they were <laughs> with somebody else's name. <laughs> <laughs> You know, back in the day, but I, I don't know if that adds anything. You know, but I'm kind of, kind of sentimental towards history. Yeah. John, could you tell us where the grist mill was along the brook? It's obviously downstream from this bridge. Is it as far down as the uh, Watson Park, or where was that grist mill? Well, um, if you're walking east past the uh, Twin Bridges and you walk down the edge of the brook on, on the south side of the brook, you come to like a little hairpin turn and you make a little right around that hairpin turn. And if you look, in fact, I, I took some photos there um, uh, and you will see the remnants of the, of the wall, uh, the sleuth way the actual dam and Chuck and I kind of try to realize what what these would look like, but there's um, there's enough there's enough left so you can you could really put a story together. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of folks in in New Hampshire and around the country that know about grist mills. They're all different types, and um, I uh, in fact yeah. I just wrote an article for the Historical Society about one on Penichuk Brook. It's, it's called the Ayers Mill. And it was on uh, on the east side of um, Concord Street. Um, and we have an original photo of that. And it's the whole thing is interesting when you dig into the history. I think, I think <laughs> that's... That, <laughs> That's really important to the town. You know, we talk about we don't have a town center, which you folks are talking about. And I totally agree. How do you make it, you know, with what you have right now? It's just a big road going north and south. Um, I think all these all these little stories add up, add up to a nice town history. I really do. So I, I don't know if that get off the track a little, but that's, that's, that's my thought. How about anybody else on the committee, Finley and Matt and. Uh... Yeah, if I, <clears throat> if I could just say a, a few things. Um, coming from kind of a different direction, but uh, being a motorcycle rider for a lot of years now, we um, usually pick our destinations to see all the covered bridges in the state of New Hampshire. And when we come across some that we know of, and sometimes we come across some that we don't know of, it is always a treat. It is a joy to, to, to go over them. I mean, it's, it's a destination for a lot of people. It brings people into your town who are, who are good folk and are taking pictures, who are looking at this thing because it's, it's, it's something that, that's going away. And unfortunately, Merrimack had the, the misadventure of having lost at least two of them over the years. And to recreate such, such a, a, a point of history and <clears throat> a positive attraction, I think it really kind of elevates the entire tenor and tone of your, your community because a lot of people will, will come from very far who are aficionados of the covered bridge as am I to, to come see it. So I, I just see a huge upside to what Merrimack should be going into the future by reaching into its past. So that's where I'm at. But then again, I just have a soft spot for the well-crafted covered bridge you know you don't see them too often and it's a treat when you do so hey thank you what about finley yes i i had the privilege of having chuck as my tour guide as well down uh, to twin bridge park uh saw the location of the grist mill and as uh, john had said it was it was pretty intriguing because you can definitely see the layout of how that mill had been established in that location. Uh, 
we do have a covered bridge right now. It's uh, Chuck had pointed out that it was not really a covered bridge in the sense, and I don't remember his explanation. He can tell you what that is, but uh, but that was uh, uh, constructed in '91 uh, because uh, it would last longer than a steel and concrete uh, bridge, um, and it was fireproofed, as a matter of fact. So uh, uh, not everybody knew that because they they didn't want everybody to know. I guess I don't know why, but. Uh, um, but this, I, I think uh, there's so much opportunity in this general area. I think it fits in nicely with the town center committee's desires. Um, and, uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm suspecting I'm not an engineer. Kyle would know much better uh, when he looks at it closely, I'm sure, uh, that the permitting, I think, will be gentler and kinder because I really suspect that the layout that Chuck described to me of this covered bridge would have it above the, well, it is above the current uh, old bridge and um in the permitting I, I think it's off far enough where it wouldn't be you know the abutments it wouldn't be um something that would invade into this water space where all those uh, hard permits to obtain would be required so uh i i think it's an, an awesome idea i'm hoping that it, um that the town center committee uh will see it, the goodness and how it fits into our charge and uh and looking for the support if, if, if the 275th, uh, I guess, I don't know if they call it a remembrance committee, the gift committee, whatever, uh, uh, would work well with them. All so. right. Thank you. What about Bill Cummings? Any thoughts you want to share? I'll keep it short and sweet. I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do too, Bill. <laughs> yeah. If I could, it, it, gives, it gives the town a nice kind of bucolic setting which I think in the end is kind of what we, we all envision the quaint New England town to be. Mm -hmm. Could look at Merrimack and kind of redo certain areas before gas stations and used car lots came in and, you know, dependent upon zoning and whatever, it'd be nice to have this eventually, this isn't going to, you know, happen instantaneously, but, but to kind of have this area change into the quaint New England village that it really should be as opposed to a uh, suburban pass through between Nashua and uh, Manchester. And I think it can be that, but it's not going to happen overnight. But I think this is a, a really positive step in the right direction, something that the town center committee can, uh, can key off of and use as kind of a launching point. So I appreciate your efforts. Good. Thank you, Matt. That's good comments. Matt Kasparius, I think we haven't heard from you. I'm not going to let you off the hook because okay. you're enthusiastic about everything. <laughs> well, that's, that's for sure. Um, so I, I, I'm the one that's chairing the overall 275th celebration, um, which is so I'm obviously here to support, uh, you know, Chuck and Rosemary today. Um, it, you know, this really started out as kind of Chuck's idea. Um, and, you know, on our, on our committee, you know, everybody kind of liked the idea. Um, and so we're kind of getting our ducks in a row, as it were. Um, and obviously, town center, is, you know, this falls within the town center. And so, you know, we're starting here. Um, next steps, obviously, is to kind of figure out what it's going to cost, you know, and then um, the committee has to go to the council with kind of they're, you know, here's what we're thinking. This is what we think it's going to cost. Here's some of the things, you know, and they, uh, this fundraising group um, has already started generating a number of ideas on, you know, ways to raise the money for this. This is, um, yeah. you know, donations and events that have fees and, you know, those kinds of things, not, not, not going in, you know, not the plan is not to, you know, ask tax, you know, taxpayer dollars for it, you know, but private donations and grants and, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and, and, uh, you know, so it's, it, it's a bit of an undertaking. Um, but uh, like I said, trying to get our ducks in a row to, to before we yeah. go to the council with this idea in, in full. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think most of us are ready to say that it's a, a worthwhile cause to pursue and a good addition for the town and, and so on. The cost is going to be a big factor. Do you have a swag of any kind of what, what we're talking about here? Uh, um, 
just I, I don't yet. I don't know if Chuck, if you've talked to anybody yet on pricing or Kyle, if you have any, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this type of project. Um, maybe it's too soon, but uh, if you have something. Uh... Well, I, I would venture to take a stab at it. Um, uh, I, I believe that this is going to wind up costing us around $200,000. Okay, that's that's a number. <laughs> Thank you. That is that, that 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 is a number. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, as in all things, uh, that is a number. Yeah. Uh, if if there was some overrun, uh, then uh, I I think you know everybody is always prepared to try and address what an overrun is. And if there's an underrun, well, then that, that is a bonus. Um, I think it's just a good target number, mm -hmm. uh, having had experience um, with previous projects in my life and so forth. Uh, I think it's a, a reasonable number for us to anticipate that we can largely get the job done. And if, for instance, uh, you know, we're envisioning a sidewalk um, along the bridge itself so that there would be a, a pass by if we were having events on the bridge. And because people can walk on the sidewalk and, you know, look over and throw a few sticks in the brook or whatever they want to do. Um, but if, if that had to be uh, a, a feature that we deferred to a future uh, fundraiser or a future time, uh, we could, you know, eliminate some costs uh, by doing that uh, and so forth. So as, as in all projects uh, that are planned, there's nothing wrong with amending a plan along the way. And in fact, we are going to be substantially amending the idea into a, a final plan. Uh, and uh, I, I think that 200,000 probably gives us the right parameter. Okay. Uh, for a project like this in its, in its turnkey nature. Okay. Okay, thank you. I want to thank this committee. Well, Finley, you would want to speak to this issue? Yeah, I, I just want to, I mean, the $200,000, as you said, is a number. Um, but if we go back 25 years to the 250th, um, I had family members who were participants in that. Um, they called it the Remembrance Committee, uh, the gift for the town, which was uh, um, Abbey Griffin Park and the bandstand. Um, the bandstand cost itself was 40 some thousand dollars, but they raised in excess of six digits 25 years ago. They were well over $100,000 in fundraising. And so uh, uh, it, it's, I suspect by today's standards, the way our, the demographics of our community versus what it was 25 years ago and uh, in the hardworking members uh, of the um, of the gift committee, um, I, I, I know the caliber and quality of people they are. Um, I, I'm confident that they'll be able to attain their goals that they set forward on the financing of the project and the project itself. Good, that's good to hear. I, if, if I might, um, not to be a Debbie Downer, <laughs> uh, so often that's my unfortunate role. Um, <laughs> I would expect the project to cost more than that. Um, what it would cost, I can't really say. Today's the first I've heard of it. Um, given the vision, I think you'd want to do some trail upgrades as well. Uh, it's certainly not accessible to that location currently um, for for uh, handicapped folks, folks in wheelchairs, moms with strollers. Um, there, there's a number of water bar steps that you'd have to traverse to get down there. Uh, so I think you'd want to include some of that component as well. Um, yeah, but anytime you talk about a span of a, of a brook, it's, I can't imagine it only being 200,000. Yeah. Well, of course, we, we were hoping to have some in-kind contributions from um, the town of Merrimack relative to their expertise and uh, 
perhaps some of the resources that they already have on hand, um, uh, including, uh, you know, engineering and design uh, um, contributions and so forth. So, um, I I appreciate uh, very much um, your expansive uh, look at what a project like this will ultimately need. And uh, we as just local citizens have an idea uh, and are willing to put our shoulder to the wheel uh, to accomplish this. But of course we need the guidance and the supervision of, uh, of, of the professionals like yourself to shepherd us uh, to an, an ultimate conclusion. So we thank you for that, Kyle. Yeah, really my only point was kind of coupling off of what Finley said is as, as you've set this as a project goal, um, I, I would aim higher in your donation request. Don't, I, I wouldn't set a bar too low uh, because often people will, once they see you've met your goal, they'll say, great, it's done. Um, if you ask for a higher, like Finley said, and this is a wonderful town uh, with, with so many great residents and businesses, um, setting a realistic goal for, for a project cost, um, I think I, I think you'll probably reach it, even if the number is higher than 200,000. Well, you know, as old folk, you know, we do want to be a little bit stingy now and then, but <laughs> the, 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 truth, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, what we're suggesting uh, we undertake and build uh, is less than the cost of a starter home in Merrimack. I think that puts it into some, you know, financial perspective. Uh, some people might say, oh, my God, $300,000. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but in fact, that's what the average home costs in Merrimack now. So I, I think that puts it in a scale that says this, this is uh, able uh, for us to accomplish. Okay. If someone has anything else they'd like to add to this discussion, I'll listen to it now. And I'm going to say that uh, we have a few other things on our agenda today to cover. And I want to thank this committee very much for your work in getting this going. And I wish you success with it. I think we will take an action among ourselves to make some sort of a motion of support for this project and pass that on to the council or whomever else is uh, interested in, in hearing from our point of view, that it is a worthy cause. I think everybody is on the committee has spoken in favor of this as an idea and as a concept. And um, we'll, uh, we'll see where it can go. It sounds like a good way to commemorate our 275 years and uh, in a good way to uh, bring people together in the community to uh, support something like this, as they've done in the past with the Kids Cove and the, and the Abbey Griffin Park and the other Watson Park things that the town people have gotten together behind. So uh, unless you'd like to say something more, I'm going to change the topic of discussion to go on with our agenda, if that's OK. Anybody want one last, one last shot at it? And if not, I, I just want to thank the committee for entertaining us today yeah. uh, and um, giving us your your very sober um, thoughts on on this project. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be sober at this hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn to our agenda and go back to the, uh, we'll probably uh, go lightly over a few of these items. And we're under old business discussions now. And uh, the first of these on number 5A is the uh, annual report to the town council. Uh, I 
talked about that last time, but there was one thing I did not mention, and I wanted to bring it up today just to be sure that uh, while I was presenting that report, this was in October now, or back in the uh, to the town council, the uh, town manager uh, wanted to be sure that we were interfacing uh, with the library master planning committee or the library's committee. And I've mentioned this to Karen, and I know <laughs> I see Karen shaking her head, but um, that was the input that I received, and I did not feed that back to the committee, and I just wanted to do that and, and have, check that box. But Karen, I'm going to give you a chance to speak to that issue. Well, I have to say that because of COVID and because of the library being shut down for a period of time and because of the um, restrictions that have to be put on the library, it's really wonderful how our library is open and safe and, and very carefully being um, protected against any, any COVID dangers. And people are coming in, their interlibrary loan is going again. One of the big things is um, they are keeping all returned materials 72 hours before they even put them back on the shelves. Everything is done very conservatively and very carefully and very well thought out. However, this has also slowed things down. And so as far as I know, and there will be a meeting this coming Tuesday of the trustees. Um, as far as I know, the group that will be uh, formulating the, um, the plan for the next five years or so, the strategic plan isn't, hasn't started actively working yet. And uh, it should be happening sometime in the next months, but I do not know when. I haven't, we haven't brought it up to the director. I know she's mentioned that it's in, it's been in mind, but I don't have anything specific to report. Okay. If and when it gets going, I think her concern was that, this is the town manager's concern, was that the town center committee uh, have some input to this, uh, whatever that may be. And I don't know if you're reciting this, uh, you're looking at other library sites or, or what, but uh, that was her oh, input to this. So the town manager um would like to see some kind of communication between this committee and the the committee doing the strategic plan yes to coordinate what a uh, town center committee okay okay i will bring that up on tuesday evening thank you thank you that takes care of item 5a <laughs> good uh, item 5B is the the status of the Sahegan River footbridge. Kyle, what's new with that, if anything? I think we're pretty understanding of where we are, but... Yeah, I don't have any updates on that project, Nelson. No. Yeah, okay. Um, the Sahegan River Trail itself, how are we doing there? Uh, the, has our uh, new um, archaeological study been accepted? And uh, that's where we left it last. Yeah, so good news on that front. Um, the state uh, historical preservation officer concurred with our consultant that no additional uh, measures were needed. So the uh, phase 1A study was um, the, the final step of the archaeological study. So that that's good news. Yes. Um, the, the other latest information, uh, the consultant, Don and I had a teleconference 
or a Zoom conference with uh, New Hampshire DES last week regarding um, mitigation for wetland impact. They had some comments on uh, on the impacts and and how to how to address it. For example, they wanted us to revisit the boardwalk idea for crossing the impoundment versus a uh, an embankment fill, which is what came out of the feasibility study. Um, so we're going to revisit that. Um, Cost-wise, I'm not sure it's possible to fit into the budget. Um, honestly, mitigation-wise, to, to construct a boardwalk, you'd have to have equipment out in there anyway. So the wetland impact would be the same, um, regardless of, of methodology. So, so we're we're working through that front. Um, the other piece of it is the uh, the DES wetland application standards have changed. Uh, previously, um, you were allowed up to ten thousand square feet of disturbance of wetlands before you had to pay into the uh, mitigation fund, the Aquatics Resource Mitigation Fund. Uh, that is now changed. So I think we're around 6,500 square feet of impact, uh, but they but would be required to either make a contribution to the ARM fund or the Aquatics Resource Mitigation Fund or to do a project in lieu of that. Um, timing wise, um, the cost is about 15,000 of which the state would pick up 80% of it, of course. Um, I've been advocating for just a payment into the fund uh, because, frankly, this project has been delayed long enough. I guess. And to to go through a a project with the conservation commission could add months more to the project. So I'm hoping we can just make the payment to the fund, and uh, we'll see we'll see where that goes. Um, the consultant is working on satisfying the DOT requirements for the limited re reuse soils in the area. That's a new standard DOT enacted in the last number of years for any soils within um, the right of way have to be uh, handled, either maintained on site or or managed through a, a, a the uh, soil management plan. So we're working through that piece. Um, and we have a meeting next week with the DOT traffic control committee to present how we're going to manage pedestrian traffic and other traffic through the work zone while the work is being done. A particular concern to that committee is how we handle pedestrian traffic during the time when we're reconstructing the sidewalk where the steel plates are. Because uh, for a period of time, that sidewalk will obviously be unusable. Um, so we have to have a plan of what to do with pedestrians during that phase of the project. Uh, so we're, we've, we've developed a plan on how to handle that. We're gonna meet with the, the traffic control committee at DOT next week, uh, virtually. Um, all that being said, um, with all of that, the new stuff that just sprang up on us in the last month or so, the advertisement date for the project is now scheduled for August of 2021. And my hope is still to advertise in, in more in the May timeframe, but that's where DOT has the project now. Uh, but even if we advertised in August, it's still a project we anticipate could at least start in uh, 2021. Yeah. So we're we're still hopeful for a ribbon cutting this year, or a groundbreaking rather, and maybe a ribbon cutting. Oh my God! Dare <laughs> to dream. No, I can't believe this. You know, I thought, you know, I thought we were all set on this wetland business you, that that's a new one i thought we had decided that because of the removal of the dam what used to be wetland is no longer wetland 
So unfortunately, it doesn't have to be wet to be wetland. Um, what they're categorizing it as, and, and DES actually gave us a helpful suggestion on how to categorize it. The, the uh, wetland scientist had categorized it as wet marsh. Uh, yeah. But a DES suggestion, um, and, and we have uh, agreement with the, the wetland scientist uh, that it more fits the profile of a of a a meadow, a wetland meadow, which is a lower class of wetland. If it was classified as marsh, then I don't know what we would have done. So that's a, that was actually a really great comment from DES. Hopefully that lessens their their scrutiny um, on that crossing, yeah. um, so that we can get the project moving. But ultimately, we don't have a wetland approval yet, so we're we're working towards that. Amazing, just amazing. Uh, uh, hey, Kyle, is uh, Frank Richardson still there? He's retired. He's retired. Okay, I dealt with him. I know a little bit about wetlands, unfortunately, through the uh, construction of the. More than you ever wanted to know. Yeah, more than I ever wanted to. I think Nelson yeah, Frank, Frank's retirement board. was a, was kind of a loss. He was a uh, he was good. He was reasonable. Yeah, um, and and we don't find that with a lot of the newer folks in state government. Yeah, because you know we had some forested wetlands where there weren't vernal pools with tadpoles leaping about and stuff. So this is kind of classified as uh, a, a meadow, kind of. That's yeah. yeah. That that's what they suggested and, and the wetland scientist agreed. Uh, there is still one component of wetland, of course. Um, as, as you look out from the fire station, you can see the big channel where water still does flow. Uh, we're actually putting a, a culvert pipe in there. So that's, that's also wetland impacts uh, because we're putting a culvert into a, a stream channel. Uh, but, but the entire crossing across the meadow is considered wetland impact. Hmm. All right. Okay. All right, let's move on to keep us going here. We're getting a little late. The status of the Woodbury Street sidewalk. How are we doing with that? That's... Um, so it, okay. it's... Does Don received the, um, the topographic survey from our consultant uh, earlier this week. So she started uh, looking at it really quickly. We've done and I had some quick consult on it. And um, design is going to occur over the winter. There, there, again, um, like every project there, there's complications, the wetland impacts are, are a little more severe than than we had hoped. Now that we have it on a plan. Um, you know, we'll, we'll work around it. We will have to do a, a wetland application for that project. Um, the other the other big piece of, of approval that we need, um, and we've discussed this previously, is we will need to get an easement from the school district. So at some point this winter, early spring, Matt, I would expect that we'd come to the school board uh, with a presentation on the project and, and the easement that, that the town would be looking to acquire this is uh woodbury correct yeah yeah i don't I, yeah I, I can't speak for the board but that'd be something you know we've been you know yeah i think that'll be okay uh, where are we with this widening of woodbury street and parking uh, additions that was uh requested yeah so so that that's going to be part of the the early phase of of uh of review um, now that that we have the uh, the topographical data and we can see it a little clearer, uh, Don and I actually discussed this yesterday. Given the the, the wetlands uh, encroach much more than I expected, uh, so I'm not sure it's going to be possible to do a widening of of the road uh, without significantly adding to the cost. Mm -hmm. Likely retaining walls would be needed or something. Uh, so we need to bring that message back to the town council and get their their final approval for what the uh, the sidewalk cross section is going to look like. Uh, 
but at this point it to, to maintain the, the approved budget, I don't think we'll be able to accommodate additional widening for parking. When do you think you'll be going back to them with uh, the, this whole thing on the platter? <laughs> yeah, that, that I'm not sure. I, I would say probably February, March timeframe. Okay. Okay. And then Matt, the Matt Chevenel, the Matt, the uh, master plan of uh, pedestrians, et cetera, in the uh, area of the high school. Yeah, we, we, we did some startup work on that, but that's kind of been put on hold, seeing that we're trying to do a, a transition back to, well, you've listened, you've probably listened to some of the board meetings. And um, there's a lot of other stuff budgetarily that are going on. So we're going to pick that back up uh, in the spring after things settle down. So right now, there's nothing new to report on that. We will get back to it this year. A oh, absolutely. Once, uh, yeah. once the dust settles and the, uh, the natives get a little bit unrestless, they calm down. We will, that, that's something, you know, that was one of the things that I was really looking forward to at the beginning of the year before things just come, kind of went sideways and skidded off the road. So that'll definitely get some really good attention once we're past the, uh, the initial shock and awe of the budget and uh, getting back to school. Yeah. Okay. And then the last item under old business was the status of the uh, uh, TCC side uh, uh, Facebook page. And I know Bill and Bill and, uh, and Nicholas have been working on this. I saw some very interesting things that Nicholas put out. Uh, well, I don't know if he sent it to everyone, but uh, it was very interesting what I when I read there, Nick, and uh, maybe you could talk to that a little more. Sure. So uh, yesterday, um, Kyle Fox and I had decided, uh, especially with uh, annual reports being due, uh, among other things, and just wanting to be able to get this information to the public, that uh, we launched the Merrimack Town Center Committee Facebook page, which, uh, as we discussed in previous meetings, we had established, we had built, it just hadn't been published so you couldn't necessarily access it um, if, you, if you weren't an ad administrator um, but what we did is we published the page so it's now available um, so it's now you can now find it on Facebook uh, and it's we have an easily accessible link to it as well so all you have to do in a web browser is type facebook.com slash town center committee and it will bring you to the Merrimack Town Center Facebook page that Kyle is showing you right now. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, could you click on the top right, click on view as visitor, just underneath edit, follow, edit. Right. Oh. Move your mouse. You'll see view as visitor. There you go. Thanks, Kyle. So the, uh, what you're seeing right now is you're viewing it as if you were to Type that URL in a browser. Again, facebook.com slash town center committee brings you right to the page so you can choose to like the page or follow the page from there. Um, the, I had deleted the posts that myself and the two bills had created just as a test because I wanted folks that were going to discover the page or find it um, from um, you know Merrimack TV sharing it and the Department of Public Works sharing it. I wanted them to see uh, what I thought was the most compelling piece of content that we have right now, which is our uh, uh, call to uh, find more members to join the committee, the video that uh, Colin here in the media division made. So um, we launched the page. We, share, we had our first post, which was the call to action for more members or volunteers with a video. And uh, Myself, we shared it on the Merrimack TV Facebook page. The Department of Public Works shared it. Um, I think the Library and Parks and Rec may have shared it too. And I am happy to say that we already have 92 people who like the page, and we have 139 people who are following us. 
Um, I'm going to guess that some of those aren't uh, some of those uh, aren't unique. I'm sure if there's 92 people liking the page, 92 of them are following. So we may have another 40 some odd followers, 50 some odd followers that are just following but haven't liked the page, um, which isn't unusual. Uh, we see that on the Merrimack TV Facebook page as well. So I'm really uh, excited that uh, we're doing this. Um, you know, we talked about this throughout the fall. Um, it now exists. Uh, as we discussed the last meeting, I am 100% on board to remain your administrator there. Uh, both bills can also see the page uh, or access the page. They can make posts as well. Um, I personally would like to be the one who makes the posts, um, but either in my absence or if need be, the, uh, both bills have access to do that. Um, Kyle also has access to the page now. Um, and uh, I think that that's good too, to have another uh, staff employee that has access to the page. Again, in, my, in, in, in the event of my um, absence or, or any other, you know, it's nice to have an extra set of eyes, especially town staff on the page. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. One of the things uh, I, I wanted to stress is that, you know, having a Facebook page is great, but it's nothing without content. So what I'd like to do is just get into the routine where on Thursdays we, we, we post a piece of content, preferably a video, um, and I'll work with my staff to come up with some videos. And on Mondays, I'd like to, pr I'd like to post either a photo or just a regular text um, status update. I'll try to uh, develop content. I'll draw stuff from your meetings um, or anything else that may be going on relative to the town center committee. Uh, just to basically create engagement, get more likes, get more follows and, and get people paying attention. Um, what I think is really cool is, and Kyle noticed this, we already had two people who direct messaged us asking or letting us know they wanted to volunteer. Um, Kyle responded to one person, I responded to the other and just let them know that we had this meeting today. Um, we'll reach out to them again and let them know the different ways that they can get involved, but um, it's already working. So that's good news. And I think, uh, you know, had the Department of Public Works and my department not had a Facebook presence, I don't necessarily think that we would have we've got would have gotten this much engagement right away. I think the video that Colin produced was a, a big help as well. You know, content is king on social media and video is the <laughs> compelling uh, form of content you can you can produce right now. You're more likely to get a video view than a you know, someone to click on a photo or, or read a, a status update. So that video was a big help. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about this and uh, I hope you guys are okay with that schedule of Thursdays and Mondays. Um, and uh, I think this is great. If anyone has any questions, love to hear them. Well, I went on the thing yesterday after you put out the notice and I was blown away. I thought it was excellent. I, I was very pleased with what I saw, and uh, this is way heads and shoulders above where we were. And uh, I have one minor problem that I need to talk to you about offline. I could get it on my cell phone easily, but I couldn't <laughs> couldn't get my Facebook on the on my computer, and that's because it's a different platform. And so I wanted my uh, I won't go into it, but. I I think um, I think how I began uh, this discussion will probably help you out. This morning, Kyle and I um, made it easier to find via the web browser. If you just type in facebook.com slash town center committee, it's going to bring you there. And Kyle and I actually, before we made that decision to choose that custom URL, we thought about specifying Merrimack Town Center Committee, but just the fact that town center committee was available we just decided to, with, to go with that one it was just yeah. you know, less is less is more so. okay. all right well my problem has to do with my password and that my password works on my cell phone but not on my computer and we, let's not talk about that here but it's just awful i'm just awful ignorant i'll, pro so, I'll provide tech support to you 24 7 nelson disco you're the greatest thank just you. you no one else <laughs> anybody else try this yet uh, just out of curiosity and uh, 
If huh? not, do it when you can. It, it's uh, it's worthwhile. John, and, did you want to say something? I do actually. Uh, actually, it's a it's a question to Nick. Um, Matt Matt gave me admin rights to the Merrimax 275th uh, celebration, and um, and I posted two or three articles on there, but uh, I think I could uh, I could use your expertise in um, making me better at posting these or how do I reach people better? Sure, you could reach out to me, uh, not 24-7 like Nelson Disco gets, but <laughs> <laughs> you can reach out to me uh, pretty much whenever or shoot me an email, John. I'd be happy to give you tips on how to better use social media to, to promote that page. Um, just really quickly, I always tell people, like I just said, less is more and make sure your content is engaging. Um, I told this to the two bills when we first started this is, uh, you know, ask a question. Um, the algorithm is sort of everything with social media. If you post more often, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're more likely to be seen or end up in people's feeds. The idea is to post less and make sure you're your content is as engaging as possible, which is one of the reasons why I'm trying to choose why I kind of pick Thursdays and Tuesday or excuse me, Thursdays and Mondays and just make sure that the content is relevant. Um, it's twice a week. You know, I think a video or a photo on a Thursday before going into the weekend, you're giving that piece of content a couple days to be seen. A lot of people use social media, you know, what seems like around the clock. A lot of people, um, you know, might check it once or twice a day. Uh, so if you post on a Thursday and people are checking their social media uh, or checking their Facebook feed, you know, Thursday night or Friday morning, maybe they don't check it till Saturday. You're giving them a few days to potentially see that content. More engaging it is, the more likely it is that they'll see it. So I always say, ask a question. Um, in fact, we did that on our first post. We said, uh, Merrimax Town Center is seeking volunteers. Are you interested in community building and social media? We'd like to help. So we ask a question. That question might prompt them to comment. And if there's more comments on a post, that piece of content is more likely to show up in other people's feeds. Um, again, that gives people a whole weekend to get to see those posts. So um, ask the best piece of advice I could give is always ask a question and don't speak to a group of people. You're speaking to one person at a time. Uh, always think you, not you or, or not everyone or hey, everybody. It's not you plural. Correct. It's are you interested in community building? Are you interested in getting to know more about the Merrimack 275th anniversary? Um, think about communicating, uh, the message as if you're speaking to one person at a time. Good, good advice. Thank you. Yeah. Want to oh, I'm sorry, Nelson. I was just going to tell Nick that he's going to get an email from me pretty quick. And... Awesome. I, I, I really do enjoy doing this stuff. I am actually writing in my annual report right now. I, I was paying an awful lot of attention to Matt Chevenel. Um, We'll say I was, but uh, <laughs> I, I end this. I'm hoping to end my the media division's annual report with the continued desire to merge cable TV services and resources over the internet, including social media platforms. I think this is just such a huge opportunity. And as Kyle and uh, Matt Casparius know, you know, the way that we use social media for our departments, it, it helps us reach people in town. Um, it, it helps us get people engaged and stay active or maybe discover us for the very first time. Um, and I, I, I'd like the town to, to do more of this stuff. And, and it's cool that, that your committee, you know, sort of uh, uh, dragged me into this, but um, I see it as a, as a, as a huge opportunity um, to really show other committees, you know, how this can be done and, um, how there can be some success from it. I mean, just the fact that we have almost 150 um, people following the page and in less than 24 hours uh, is big. That's good. Great. Well, thank you, Nick, for all you're doing. Um, I, I, 
it's getting pretty late and I think maybe what I'll do is postpone most of this to the next meeting. We should set a date for our next meeting. Um, the uh, next calendar here is uh, sometime in February, I would suggest. We've got a few items that are still pending. I do have a, an annual report that I put together for our committee. I've sent it to everyone. Um, I just give me any feedback you want on that. Um, I think I'll pretty much, I think, I don't think you'll have any real disagreements with it, but uh, just any suggestions you want to make for additions or improvements, I'd appreciate. And uh, you can do that by email to me. And let's see if we can pick something in, in February when we can get together again. Um, the Fridays being, uh, well, there's a month from now would be uh, the 12th, 19th or 26th Fridays. Any particular uh, desires by the committee to when you'd like to do this again? Such fun. Huh? Finley, you're the hardest guy to get a hold of. What do you say? <laughs> Fridays are generally good. I'm in the middle of watching grandchildren coming out of my ears. And so I have to scoot out. And so it's a little breather in the middle of the day. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so whatever well, is best for the committee. What's best? What about 19? Shall I say 19? Sure. Sure. Okay. I said 19 and we'll make it February 19th. And, uh, We'll do it then. Unless I hear from you, I'm going ahead with the annual report. And yeah. we can talk more about our committees next time. Uh, and Vice Chair, I think uh, we can let our meeting uh, be adjourned by a roll call vote, if that's the pleasure of the committee. We seem to have lost a couple people. I think we lost Bill Wilkes. And uh, I don't know who else was on that didn't. But anyway, let's take a roll call vote. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Bill Gummings. Who Do I hear a second? What? I didn't hear a second. I didn't hear a second either. You're Matt, on mute. That's miming a second. Can I, can I do a second or did you jump me, Fox? Did you kind of no, I was saying that you were miming it. Yeah, I was <laughs> miming it. So I'd like to do a second. Okay, who, who, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Who's got the second? Hey, Nelson, Matt, Matt Chevenel, second. Okay, Matt, good. How do you vote, Matt? I vote yes. Okay. How do you vote, uh, Bill? Yes. Yes. How do you vote, Finley? Yes. How do you vote, Karen? Yes. And how do you vote, Kyle? Yes. Well, we're in favor. We are we are adjourned until Friday, the uh, February nineteenth. Very good. Thank Have a good week. Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel to gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects. We aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook.